Hello. Yeah, oh, that was pretty good to start. All right. All right. Uh, welcome to the Motherlands Live at PAX Unplugged 2023. Woo! Uh, I am your, I'm your storyteller for this evening, giving you honey a break. Yeah! Oh, sorry, that's just me. <laughs> okay, now, honestly. Well, we haven't even started in this chaos. Good job. Um, oh, and I am very close to the mic. Hello. So, um, I'm going to have everyone introduce themselves and their, a little bit about their characters before we actually tell the story. Um, anyone in the audience, feel free to live tweet the, the game. We are being streamed. Hello to everyone on PAX 3. And, um, yeah, we're going to have a little fun on Batoa for the next couple of hours. So, uh, I'm going to start with our new player. Yes. <laughs> the mic Don't is on. Oh, I know you can hear me. You got this. I stand by what I just said. Um, hi, I'm Farron Bailey. Uh, you may know me as Fair Bear on the internet. Um, tonight I will be playing Kehinde, a Salonse channeler. Uh, pronouns are she, they. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Eugenio Vargas, uh, DM Jazzy Hands on the Internet, and I get to play a character this time. I'm very excited. <laughs> Who am I playing? I'm playing Goma. It's fine. <laughs> I'm playing Goma. Uh, Goma is a Misajai bio priest, so a little combo of a couple of our characters from the show. Uh, Goma, uh, well, that's all we're saying. Uh, her pronouns are she, her. All right, awesome. Uh, hi, I'm Mandy. I'm known around the internet as Lady Luck 34, uh, and I'm returning again. Yeah. For those of you, who remember, <laughs> for those of you who remember last year's Pax Unplugged show. Uh, no. Sorry. What was that? Have some water. Have some water. Oh, no. uh, coming back with uh, Mirren, who is a Batantu pack master, and her animal companion. Prashia, who is a Volca. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, Volcas in the context of the game Motherlands is basically like an Ankylosaurus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. Who also? Casa volcanic rocks, it's yep. fine. <gasps> don't. Sorry. I <laughs> think I love them already. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let Brian introduce their character. Uh, hi, I am Brian. I am known on the internet as Urban Bohemian. I will be playing Essen. Uh, who is a Rakin Sakwo, and uh, I, yeah, I don't have anything else. <laughs> I never know what to say. All oh, right. Uh, our, uh, sorry, their pronouns are he, him. All right. Uh, I'm your storyteller. I, I have to get out of D&D &D mindset. I almost said DM. <laughs> so, uh, just a little bit of context for those that don't know anything about the Motherlands. It is a Afrofuturist sci-fi setting set on the world of Butoa, and the conceit of the game and the world is that Mansa Musa, an actual uh, emperor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, emperor. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm the worst history student anyone <laughs> has ever met. <laughs> uh, actual emperor who did send an expedition out to the Americas that was never found, and we just decided to kind of wave our hands and say that they wound up on Butoa like 3,000 years ago. And our story takes place after that, after everyone is kind of integrated into the society of Vito and culture, and they're called Missalians. We have Salansi, who are plant people. We have Hyenol, who are, if we have to call them hyenas, but, you know, <laughs> but they're more than just anthropomorphic animals. So I think we're ready to start. Let's do it. When you are ready. <laughs> So, for anyone who remembers last year's game or saw the VOD, we had a celebration called Founders Day. And the crew that was normally on Utoa and working for Torch had the day off, except for poor Invicta. <laughs> <laughs> she thought she did. She had a day. She had a day and a half. All she wanted was to drink her her uh, Vitoan whiskey and have a nice day with her Salonsi partner. And that did not happen. She wound up killing people and, well, that was a year ago. Things have settled a little bit. Torch is still there. Major Rafia is still around. And we have a kind of new crew this time. So we have Essen and Marin who are returning to duty. Founder's Day is approaching once more, but this is a little different. You've been summoned to Torch Headquarters by Major Rafia, our, our good 
Misajai, not Misajai, oh my god. Monsagene? Monsagene, uh, leader of Torch. Why did we do so many M's? M's, M's and I's. <laughs> if you're making a game, please don't give everyone the same consonant or vowel to start their name. Um, Y'all have been summoned to our headquarters at, for a mission and briefing. So when you arrive, what are you all doing and wearing when you all kind of arrive at Torch together? Um, Goma is absolutely the first one to arrive. Uh, she is <clears throat> very anxious just all the time, sort of picking, straightening. She's wearing a pristine white, uh, like, jumpsuit looking thing that has, you can just barely see tiny seams of little zippers and, and pockets and pouches uh, all over, up and down the arms and the sides of their torso. Um, she is uh, very, very dark skin, but she has uh, the typical Misajai uh, markings that happen when uh, a Musalian uh, combines with the symbiont. Um, but hers, most of the ones that we've seen on the show and seen before are sort of streaks and lines. Hers are these intricate whorls and labyrinthine passages that go all up and down her body and even into her hair. Um, and every now and then uh, you'll see one, one whorl or one spiral somewhere will sort of begin to light up as she notices something that catches her attention and then she sort of settles back and, and sits down, speaking not a word. All right, you're in the kind of waiting room before Major yeah, Rufia's yeah. office. Sort of thinking, oh, they're, they're, they're late. I mean, they're not late, they're just not early. Who arrives next? <laughs> now it's you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mirren stumbles in, being like, I'm so sorry, that's on fire. Uh, this happens. And uh, speaking to somebody through the door, because unfortunately, uh, Brescia has definitely coughed something up into a flower bed again. Uh, but uh, Mirren is a Vitantu, so has grown up in the depths of Vitoa. And as a result, is maybe a little odder looking compared to some of the others. Longer limbs, not quite proportioned correctly to her torso. Uh, very pale silver eyes mm. and wearing uh, bits and pieces, not an entire, but bits and pieces of the Enviro suits that you would see uh, around the world because she's scrounged them from the depths as she's progressed through. She's also carrying uh, a staff with a lantern at the end uh, that some people might remember from last time <laughs> as, as Brescia, this quite large uh, creature, again, looks a bit like an ankylosaurus, um, but has these darker charcoal and slate tones across um, the scaling and little bits of a dusty red kind of popping out like you might see around a volcano and stumbles in being like, oh, I hope they don't want me to pay for that flower bed again. Hi, how are you? The moment uh, Mirren walks in, uh, Goma begins to reorganize some of her pouches and things. And we've worked together for long enough that you absolutely know what she's doing, which is she's taking her burn ointments and her other treatments for high temperatures and making them a little more accessible. <laughs> um, I, I'm fine. You're early, so that's good. Do we know where the, are they going to be? Are they early? Because she's waiting and I, do we, are they here? Maybe. Okay. Okay. And just shuffles Brescia off to the side. Like, okay. let's not catch anything else on fire. Who arrives next? I think at, at that point, Essen arrives. Um, a very, very tall, rocking um, Sakuo, so they are emotional and, and psychic kind of healers. And he is very tall. Like, the, the Rakin are some of the tallest on Vitoa. And is wearing... Um, is sort of wearing a, a blue and silver robe. There are metallic fibers that you can see kind of weaving through it and walks in essentially kind of with a smirk on his face because like there is still smoke outside. Of, <laughs> it's like I... <laughs> so um, Mirren got here first, right? Um, no, uh, no, definitely not. I was here first, um, but it's fine because Miriam was also early and you're on time, which is late, but not late, but it is a little bit late, but it's okay. 
paper the flower bed down? Well, I mean, next time I will. I will do my best to be on time, not late. Yep, early is on time, on time is late, and late is unacceptable. She's not smiling. No, Essen is, Essen is, Essen is widely smiling at this because this is, he is used to this. It's, it's not even, we, they haven't even started the, the banter of him teasing her yet. So he then just, he takes a seat and waits because I don't believe we're all here, correct? Nope, nope, somebody's late. That's unacceptable. <laughs> yeah, Kahindi is late on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> It is, <laughs> and it's, it has nothing to do with Goma. It's just she is I fashionably know. late. Ugh. She's having a time. It's it's foundation day, right? Yeah. She's you still have to work. And I can, uh, you know what? It's called multitasking. I can get my conversations in too. <laughs> <laughs> so Kehinde does show up late, like maybe five minutes after Essen does, like trying to like still like wave smoke out of her face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, Mirren, again, really? It's really potent. It just starts really yeah. long lasting fires. And as she walks in, you see a very tall statuesque um, woman with deep uh, earthy dark skin. Um, her hair is like a mixture of different greens, like tendrils of dreadlocks that sort of go down her back and end in um, snapping Venus flytraps. Yes. Um, her body is covered in like leaves and it, it almost looks like vitiligo almost, but it's like leaves and like just some mossy areas as well. And she comes in like waiting was like, oh, isn't this supposed to be a holiday? Why are we working? It's just a natural body process. <laughs> <laughs> did that answer the question? That's, Honestly, we, that we, did not we, answer my question. We ended up getting this job so on a holiday, so I'm, I'm not very surprised that we're here now. Are we, getting a, are we at least getting time and a half? Goma has not said a word since you came in. She has simply gone behind all of you and started herding you towards Rafia's office. <laughs> are you also herding the Volca? Yeah. Yes. Is it harder or easier than you three? Ooh. I would say definitely easier than Kehinde. <laughs> it's, right, so it's definitely better trained than the three of us. Yeah. <laughs> Great. I, it's a lot of like two of you and the Volca, and then I have to double back to get which, well, so I have to get Kehinde, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you managed to herd everyone <laughs> into Major Rafia's office. Immediately apologizing. So sorry, Major, so sorry. I know that we're late, and it's only about 30 seconds late, but late is unacceptable. I'm so sorry. Go, Ma. Major. Please relax. I'll do my best, Major. Doma, do you do you understand how to relax? No. <laughs> Kehinde looks at Goma like answer the question. Conceptually. <laughs> <laughs> And you just hear whirring clicks as <laughs> Major Rufia <laughs> ponders this answer. <clears throat> Processing. It also feels like an attack, honestly. <laughs> Hit dog's holler. So, do you know why you were called here, all of you? If it is anything like the last Foundation Day, I, I, I hope it is nothing that severe. No, nothing that severe. But maybe so severe? Better or worse, though? Well, it is a simple escort mission. Have, have we received, like, a, a briefing or a dossier or something that we were, like, meant to read? <laughs> Just out of curiosity. <laughs> of course you were, and you were the only one that read oh, it. I I'm for going sure to read it then, yeah. and... <laughs> You're the reader of the group. I, there was a briefing? <laughs> there was a briefing, yes. I'm sorry, Brescia ate mine. I'm sorry, what? In a very unmonsigany way, too. Like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> it was digitally sent. Sometimes choose on electronics. That's what immediately forms a screen from his wrist brace and starts re. Oh, oh, oh okay, you did send it. I'm, I'm, I, I would say sorry, but this is actually really long. 
I skimmed. I, I, I skimmed. It's 72 pages. It's not that long. I, <laughs> I only, okay, I'll be frank. I only skimmed the first three pages and then I. <laughs> Uh, so this explains your current summary? rank in Torch. <laughs> yes. And why you are here on a holiday work working. Can they shut the up? <laughs> <laughs> so Rafia waves a hand and the dossier pops up and there's two older looking high and all on the screen. <laughs> We all know what's about to happen. Yes. That explains Ask your comments earlier. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. And you see a familiar name as one of their relatives and also an emergency contact. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's a very complete mission briefing. That's why it was 72 pages long. That's right. There are phones for you too. <laughs> Yes, that's pages 8 through 10. Thank you. <laughs> that is the entire torch man manual. <laughs> <clears throat> we'll get through this game, I swear. Um, so the two older looking high and old are actually the parents of torch agent in Invicta. You met her last Founders Day, correct, Essen? That was quite a day, yes. And... As such, she's taken the day off with her, her salon something. I don't quite understand the word she used. What was the word? Okay. It's a, it's a <laughs> high and old word I have a hard time processing. I, sounds I like it's complicated. Right Sorry. Sounds that sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> it is. Thank you for noticing. Note to self, demote Kehinde at the earliest convenience. No, if I get demoted, does that mean that I just don't have a job anymore? Oh, you have, have to stop. I mean, you did want the day off. You will have a job, just not the one you wanted. I don't want any job. <laughs> Noted. Goma pops up the pay scales of all the different ranks and just shows the pay difference between where you are and what it would be if you were demoted. Uh, noted. And <laughs> he goes on the toe at Tinder and starts looking for her rich husband. <laughs> so, an escort mission, and are they considered, are they, they're the parents of a torch agent, so does this afford them some sort of dignitary status? Or? Yes. Their entire record is currently cl classified. I do not know how much Invicta told you about her family. Nothing. Great. <laughs> we had a misadventure during Foundation Day last year. That yeah. was a y year ago. Have you not interacted since? We are honestly still not sure Invicta actually enjoys our company. <laughs> Note to self, personal training for all of my agents. <laughs> Goma looks excited about more training, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, it will be a strenuous process. I'm sure you will enjoy it, Goma. Mm. So, as such as her parents are the equivalent of a dignitary of Rutoa, you must take them to ha Hathare. Mm. You remember Bartram, correct? Page 62. I, <laughs> yeah. Just, oh, okay. Um, and you can tell Rafia is getting frustrated because the cracks on her mask and her face are starting to glow red. Oh, no. This isn't the normal, beautiful glow of her skin and her mask and her face. This is danger, Will Robinson, danger. <laughs> <laughs> Glowing. Uh, Kehinde takes a step back. <laughs> She's not going to explode or anything. <laughs> Kehinde takes and a step back. <laughs> you should step back. And to repeat, we are to we are to take them where? To Hathare. Okay. Ambassador Bartrand has requested specifically that they have an escort capable of keeping them safe. 
until they arrive and through the ceremony that will happen on Ha Ha Thray. I think all of us look at each other at the same time like, and you pick us? <laughs> I am, yeah, I, mean, does. <laughs> <laughs> I am regretting the decision to include you in this Kehinde. Are they okay with fire? They're... Hot. As a byproduct. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> Just in case. Are you planning to set fire to things? Sometimes fires happen. Oh, your pet. They are rated for space travel. <laughs> sure. You have broken Major Rafi at this point. Oh, no. <laughs> All of her synapses just go. Now I understand why Invicta drinks. <laughs> do you understand the assignment? Uh, question. Yes, we... we do. <laughs> Question, Major, are we to escort them back or just to? Oh, operate? actually, that is a good question. Kehine <laughs> <laughs> cuts her eyes so sharp at Goma. Goma wants to know the answer. She doesn't notice. Well, if you survive the mission. <laughs> is that a yes? Is, is the you just see Rafia lean over and start typing on a console. Pulling up Kehinde's file. <laughs> <laughs> you see in like bold words at the top, Nepo baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's not oh. that capitalistic a society. No, we don't even have that to find out. <laughs> so we are to escort Invicta's parents. Correct. To a perhaps dangerous location. Well, Hathere, is this, is, mm, how to explain this? Hathere can be dangerous. It can be fatal. It is also sized for Hathoreans, which you are not. Uh, oh, no. Quick aside for those who don't know, oh, no. oh, no. Hathoreans are basically like elephants. So imagine regular humanoid sized beings going to a planet made for elephants. <laughs> right, now it's coming back to me. Yes. All right, and this doesn't actually sound very dangerous. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, and he, he has, Essen has been slowly reading through the brief. I am actually not sure why the word survivability appears so often in this briefing. Well, it is a hostile environment to some species on Vitoa. Got it. Also, their backgrounds and their deeds are so classified, I don't even know their names. Oh, that answered my question. <laughs> uh, so, how should we refer to them? Major Domo. Major Domo. Yes. Okay. Or, if you feel shall we say, what is the old, old saying? If you feel froggy. <laughs> <laughs> that is... Well, I'm glad that one made it to the show. <laughs> um, I, I do have to say, my brain went in a completely different direction, and I was like, is Tanya going to say, it, it, it's Miss Jackson if you're nasty? Was, <laughs> that thing did make it to the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You could call them Invecta's parents and see what happens to you. I mean, they are, but that's not an identity. That is not all they do. No, of course. Being your parents is just one part of who they are. Although I would like to see a hollow bit if you do it. <laughs> I need some entertainment. I don't think there would be enough evidence left for there to be a hollow video of it. Oh, our ships are well equipped. And if you read your instruction manual, you would know that. I did read the instruction manual for the ships. Did you? Question. <laughs> Thank you. I was just going to say. <laughs> In or out of character? <laughs> I skimmed. <laughs> In character. Yes. Mirren's just trying to <laughs> break whatever this is. Uh, are we picking them up or are they meeting us at the spaceport? They will be in the lobby by the time you leave this meeting. 
Okay. Ooh, I hope they managed to uh, clean up all those volcanic rocks before they entered the building. Did your Volca leave a mess again? It was just one flower bed. And to just, be fair, the, the staff is used to it by now. I'm sure they picked it up very well. Maren, you really need to start carrying around food bags. <laughs> Flammable. Coma is dying. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Major Rafia notices this and looks towards you, Goma. As the likely most responsible member of this party, you, you are in charge. Oh my god, that's so much worse. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I cannot wait to meet Invicta's parents. Oh, I'm excited. Now. Well, you've met in Invicta before. If she, if her, well, I, I suppose if, if her parents are anything like her, if she's anything like them, it's either going to be a very quiet trip or perhaps we're going to learn a lot. Maybe even their names. That's classified above your rank. I don't know their names. Well, they do. They do. <laughs> <laughs> no, their or, names are so classified I, you know, that they, they don't know their names. <laughs> Very classified. Well, here's the part of the dossier that clearly none of you got to. The reason there are that many of you taking them is because there is a planned assassination attempt on them. Oh. There it is. Yes. That was on page 28, paragraph C, section 4. That's what made it looks to Goma to confirm. <laughs> Second sentence. I mean, see one of us read it. I mean, at least one of us read it. And now the mission commander is is got all the yes. shrivels. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think that we will be more than equipped to protect these important people, get them to their destination, and we really don't know anything beyond that. I... Well, provided everyone survives the mission. Again, with the survives. <laughs> you knew what you signed up for when you joined Torch. Did we to be fair, <laughs> we, I know it was every, you, it was a very fast day. A lot of things were happening. Um, oh, fair did you not read your assignment contract after you were made members of Torch? It's been a year, so probably. Again, skim. <laughs> Note to self: Ensure that people read the contracts before they join join Torch. I just clicked accept. <laughs> Hey. This was an the after the briefing major. We will go into this mission now and get this out of here before anyone else reveals that they don't know what their job this is. This was an Apple's terms and conditions. I the tone and docu sign. That's it. One button. <laughs> so, Goma, you actually get an additional set of instructions because you have been designated the mission commander. Uh, I mean, it's more to read, which is very exciting. So, what you've been sent since yeah. no one else read the briefing <laughs> in full, Kahinde. Um, I'm skimming, I'm skimming. What you find is that when you arrive, that a delegation from Ambassador Bertrand's office will be there to meet you. You all have been given housing in the same dignitary type. Not hostel, but it's, it's better than a hotel. Mm -hmm. Much better than a hostel, but not like a Four Seasons. Sure. And you are to remain with them throughout the ceremony. Um, you can have a day of relaxation, assuming everyone survives the assassination attempt. And then you are to bring them back. And then Invicta will be here to meet you. So if her parents don't survive, I suggest you don't return. Oh, that I definitely won't if that happens. Oh, you'll return, Kehinde. Okay, I'm getting this messages from you. Because first you said that they don't survive, I shouldn't return. And now you saying that I will return. Oh no, we're going to have a meeting when you get back. Okay. Well, we do appreciate your faith that we will return with a successfully completed mission. Yeah. And everyone hail and hearty, hearty, correct? Correct? <clears throat> yes, Major. Dismissed. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Three problem children in Goma. <laughs> Not equipped to handle you all. <laughs> Good luck, Goma. Is what you hear. 
is what you hear as the major's door closes. <laughs> No, to the spaceport. <laughs> yep, I'm trying the torch. Well, we need to stop at the lobby, obviously, to pick up our escort yeah. keys. Mission Commander Filma. It's a test. Mm -hmm. She strides off. <laughs> You're walking in the wrong direction. That's not true. It is true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll head down to uh, Torch Lobby to pick them up. And you find two um, older-looking Hyenol you can see the resemblance to Invicta very clearly, at least in her mom. You know, the same kind of reddish hair. But she, this woman looks like she has seen and done some things. <laughs> and she's in a, the crispest black dress uniform any of you have ever seen. Ooh, okay. okay. Is there any indication of rank on the uniform? Um, they have matte black pips. Oh dear. Oh yes. Okay. This is this is a rank that is so secret, no one even knows what those pips mean, including me. Uh, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, as a player, was about to ask because I was like, "What does that mean?" There's so many levels of classified you, right now. Clarified, because my next question was going to be, "Would we even understand?" <laughs> no, okay. not at all. Great. Um, and the the gentleman high and all. He is in a gray impeccable dress uniform as well. And you know, it's it's a little weird for him to be dressed to the nines just to go get in a spaceship, but befitting their rank of Major Domo and the standing that they have with the Butoan government, they are basically ready to be on alert from the second they walk out the door with you all. Sir, ma'am, it is an honor. Um, we are to escort you to Hothray. Um, and I believe all preparations have been made, so if you will follow um, just this way, uh, uh, S and with me. Uh, and the two of us will put ourselves in front of the two of them, and I, mm, Goma perhaps foolishly trusts that the other two will fall in behind. I mean, you have a, you have two and a half, you have a Volca. It's true, it's true. Uh, and we will start walking to the spaceport. <laughs> Yeah, this spaceport is, is walkable. It's, sure, not, sure. it's not like a, a, a movie where you're like, we're going to the spaceport, and, and an hour later, you right. were... <laughs> Very well-planned communities on the toe. It's nice. It's yes. Right. Urban planning went well. Love it. Um, so all of you get there without incident, thankfully, including your Volca. It stopped spitting up fiery rocks for now. It got it all out earlier. Did your Volca get airsick? <laughs> oh. I... That is a great question. Is your Volca crate trained? <laughs> it's a Volca. We live underground. The question still stands, I think. No. Understood. So, do you all try to engage them in conversation? No. Have they? Have their faces been like you said that they were dressed in? You know. The, dress uniforms, but they also, their demeanor, we've met Invicta, their mm -hmm. demeanor, has it been very, like, neutral, all business? Um, the, the gentleman, her father, is a bit, he seems a bit more receptive. The mother is, look, we have somewhere to be, y'all are running late, I don't like this, let's go. We were on time. That's her demeanor, that's, she has not said this. <laughs> that is her, very, she is military. She's like, we have places to be. <laughs> Did they react to the Volca at all? She kind of looks at it, like, gives you the Kermit the Frog nod. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Approval. Okay. Um, Good. They, they grew up with Invicta as a child. What do you think that was like? <laughs> if, uh, if, they're, if they're not going to say anything, I'm content to continue the silent escort, at least until we get to the ship. Okay. I'm sure Goma is as well. <laughs> She's yeah, just good. taking deep, quiet breaths. Uh, do they have any bags or anything with them? Uh, those are already on the ship. Okay. And bags have been provided for you all with additional uniforms, dress uniforms for the event. Mm. Um, that was also in the thing, wasn't it? Yes. Okay. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. That was page 46, paragraph 5, line 3. Which, if you ask me, is a little strange to be in the very middle of the dossier. It's kind of an important thing. It should be at the beginning or the end, but it's fine because we got... Sorry, no one asked. 
Uh, <laughs> have we ever worn uniforms before? <laughs> yes, there's a torch uniform. Technically, we would have, yes. We, we have. I don't know if Mira has. Probably not. Okay. <laughs> And meanwhile, Major Rafia is in her office. She has poured herself the finest Butoan whiskey. <laughs> and she is writing up a dossier on how to demote Kahinde. <laughs> should you all survive. A training program for Volka to stop <laughs> setting things on fire. And possibly asking Goma and Essen to maybe teach once they get back. Again, provided you all survive. Hmm. So, you've made it to the spaceport, your Volca is behaving, it's already caused some small fires, not on the ship, but before you got to the ship, it's got its own fireproof area to sleep in, we hope. Again, they were prepared for you all. Um, yeah, and you'll have nice cabins. It is a little bit of a trip to Hawthorne. It's not like, you know, current day commercial airlines. You're not being kettle called into a tin can. So you all have like a nice little cabin. They obviously have a nice suite, which is toward the middle of the ship. And you have a little bit of time if you would like to chat amongst each other on what you're going to do before you get to Hawthorne or try to engage them in conversation. Hey, Goma. <laughs> yeah. What are we doing? <laughs> Black Jesus wept. Oh. Eva Kahende is looking like, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> she takes a few deep breaths. She brings up the dossier and says, page one, paragraph one. Section A it begins to read you the missing dossier. <laughs> All 82 pages? I mean, I'm not sure Mira's going to stay still that long, but if she does, yes. Okay, but like, what do we need to know? Protect them. Okay. Oh, come on, Mira, even I was listening. <laughs> they really could have made that a lot shorter, I think. It could have been a bullet-pointed list of Pick things the, that we like needed. It could have been pictures. Pick them up, make sure nothing harmed, come back. But then how would we know about the particular dangers of three different pirate bands between here and Hothere, also the asteroid field, also the dark matter field, also that she goes for a few minutes? Are um, we, you know, piloting the ship? <laughs> no, there's a pilot. There's a oh, torch yeah. pilot. You are not... It, they want you to get to the planet alive. <laughs> Um, I have been scouring our character sheets yeah, being like, okay. who pilots? Which uh, one of us can pilot? Oh, Hania wrote me a note and said, do you have any skills of pilot? And I said, absolutely not. <laughs> no, no, no. Torch would not expect any of you to drive a ship, nor would they trust you. <laughs> because they would like you that to get there in one piece. They learned wow, they after did. I made you all pilot everything. <laughs> uh-huh. I'm not doing that to you. <laughs> Or to yourself. I think oh no, would. I would do it to myself to get back <laughs> to Kenya. Um, Essen would definitely now now understanding that we need to we, we need to actually have another a different sense of decorum would go and change into the torch uniform appropriate for the yeah. mission. And based on what you do at Torch, is it gold, blue, red? Oh, do we do? I don't know division colors in that. Oh, interesting. Um, Which one of them are the golden bands? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think none of them. <laughs> um, I think, I think based, it would probably be somewhat similar to Goma's since he is, he is still sure. more of a healer. Um, but because he is, because he's Rakim, um, it would, it would also have the same metal weave in it to to ground their excess static charge and make sure that that he doesn't mess up any of the ship's electronics and is able to mm. use his innate abilities. Mm. And um, but it would it would definitely probably be um, similar to Goma's, but a paler blue. Okay. So, Mirren and Kahinde, 
What would your dress uniforms look like? Well, I don't know what the rankings are. <laughs> Currently, your rank is under the earth. Under <laughs> the <toes. laughs> That is, yeah, rank is not a Because the more you kept talking, the more that <laughs> Rafia was actually pressing buttons yeah. on your personnel. I, I, change your luggage I, out with I assume, though, that when I come back after doing a fantastic job, I'm going to get my, my former rank back. Mm, we shall uh, see. No, but I, I, like, I, as a player, don't know what the ranks are. Um, so you all would be the equivalent of lieutenants. Okay. So you would have more rank insignia than so much color. So you could pick what you like, or you, I could assign it to you. <laughs> um, I think it's, uh, they're very clean, sort of like almost minimalist. Mm -hmm. uh, you have like my insignia on, but for the most part, it's not very, um, unlike Kehinde herself, it's not very um, flashy or forward. Just like maybe some slacks and then like a nice, like, like iron shirt, basically, and just, Maybe some epaulets, because I feel like that's dope. But the epaulets look like the, the only extra thing about it is like the epaulets do look like the jaw of a Venus flytrap opened up on either side of her head. Yes. Okay. Cool. Making a note of that. <laughs> <laughs> because Venus flytraps have teeth and you have a lot of hair. But I am also a plant person made up that of Venus. That doesn't make plant. a difference. <laughs> My hair also has Venus flytraps on it. I mean, uh huh. I know that. <laughs> Tanya uh, wants is out for my blood. <laughs> uh huh. We've made some choices here. Uh, Mirren, after seeing the others uh, swap into, well, except for Goma, who was already in uniform, uh, swap into Moform, was like, oh, I guess we're we're like being like we're doing this, uh, and would have gone and also put on, uh, but mostly would have chosen uh, probably anything that's. Red toned to match to Brescia. Yes. Because you got to know that we go together. Um, we do. <laughs> <laughs> but would have gone ahead and still pulled uh, the pieces of the environment suit uh, that she had scrounged and just put them over it. So formal ish. Okay. <laughs> but not losing some of the elements that would have been. Um, I guess integral to how Mirian progresses through the world and, and having kind of lived in the depths. Like, wh why would you go anywhere without your, your protection? All right. So you all have gotten changed. You still have a little bit of time, well, a lot of time before you get to Hothray proper. <laughs> um, are you talking to each other? Are you trying to engage with Invicta's parents? Or are you just kind of like, oh, what have we got ourselves into? I think while, once Goma realizes that they've all gone to change and they're all distracted, uh, she will go to uh, Invictus' parents' quarters uh, and just uh, uh, knock politely to... <laughs> Who is it? Uh, uh, which one just responded before I misgender them? <laughs> Her mother. Great. Uh, it's Goma, ma'am. Oh, sorry, it's... Commander Goma, ma'am. <laughs> Enter. Uh, and she'll walk in uh, very, she's, she's not an enormously tall woman, but she has brought herself up to every inch of height that she's got. Uh, very stiff, very proper looking. Um, it's a pleasure to have you aboard. I just wanted to see that you were comfortable and if there was anything you needed before the voyage began. She's sitting there with like, you know, a glass, basically a glass of wine, just kind of measuring you. <laughs> and she's just looking at you and, you know, glances at her, at her husband. So, really, why are you here to protect us? Uh, well, ma'am, we are aware uh, that the two of you have provided great services to Torch and to Vitoa, and it is important that you arrive at your destination safely, and we're here to make sure that that happens. It would not be out of the ordinary or surprising in any way for anyone who's read the mission brief that there may be attempts on your life between now and the end of the ceremony that we're going to attend. So we're here to make sure that we can do everything in our power to get you back home to Vitoa safely. And she just gives you the biggest predator grin. <clears throat> and why do you think that you could keep us safe? Excuse me a minute, ma'am. <laughs> we are 
aware that you are both likely able to uh, protect yourselves, um, though the nature of your service uh, does necessitate a certain amount of secrecy and classification, so uh, we are not entirely aware of your capabilities, uh, but we were hoping that in addition to being able to protect you uh, and keep you safe, also that would allow you to uh, relax and enjoy this great honor that you are receiving on Hathre. And she just keeps giving you the predator grin. <laughs> And, and her husband joins her. And they just keep looking at you like, oh, you're so cute. <laughs> at your service, sir, ma'am. And she turns around very smartly and walks out. Uh, and just before the doors close uh, behind her, there's a little, she, she lets it go just a hair's breadth too early. Oh, God, we're going to fail. <laughs> 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 and you, you just hear like a little chuckle. Oh, that one's fun. They didn't even wait to be dismissed. <laughs> uh, Forgeno, well, <laughs> did she hear that? I don't know. Did she? I don't know. Let's find out. Let's roll some dice. Yes. Give me a roll. <laughs> <laughs> the first roll. Oh, no. Oh, so, she's very bad at awareness. I this is great. <laughs> so, <laughs> So, uh, Eugenio, please explain your dice pool that yeah, you're Yeah, so uh, we have three, there are two main types of, uh, of dice that we're going to pull from. We're going to pick a value. Um, there are a number of values, things like uh, exploration and faith and freedom or honor, uh, which is what I'm pulling here because it is a matter of Goma's honor, whether or not she heard this and reacts to it. Uh, so I'm going to pull the dice from that. I'm then going to go down to my skills and pick one of my skills that applies to the situation. In this case, I'm using awareness, which she's also quite bad at. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to grab the dice from from uh, my awareness skills. So far, I've built two D4. Um, every dice pool gets a utility die. I'm not using any special equipment to have heard them better, so the default utility die is yet another D4. Ooh. I'm gonna roll these three dice up. Any fours are successes. Anything lower than a four is a failure. Ooh, Ooh. oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> wow. She absolutely heard that. I she rolled three fours. Yeah. <laughs> The well, one I'm time, <laughs> the one time you wish you failed. Yeah. The um, so, Goma, yeah. what does that mean for you? Oh, this is bad. So, <sighs> Goma hears it, and and takes a moment where the thought goes, "I didn't wait to be dismissed. That's not." I don't know what rank they have. We're not supposed to know what rank they have, so maybe I shouldn't have stayed to be dis... But she said something about me should have been dismissed. I think Goma is going to... She's, she's a nervous girl, but she is, she's also been in Torch long enough and is well-trained enough. I think she's going to, to stick with her choice to leave and hope that it's a test, because that seems like a thing someone would do, right? Yeah, uh, and then quietly if, have an existential crisis. Absolutely. Yeah. Quietly. She's going to go to room and scream. Uh, <laughs> But for now, she has decided that it was a test to see whether or not Goma knows or thinks she knows more than she should about their rank and their position, and she's going to very quickly and with an ever slumping torso uh, <laughs> head to her room uh, and just scream into a pillow a little bit. <laughs> While Goma's having an existential crisis, <laughs> what are the rest of you doing? Are any of you else going to brave meeting Invictus' parents and talking to them? Mm, Kehinde has decided she's going to keep her mouth shut this time. <laughs> oh, now you decide to be wise. Yeah. Surprise. Hmm. Better late than never. Growth. Yeah. <laughs> Growth. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> <S> -N -R -N. <laughs> you know, I was, I was feeling boozy. I didn't have enough chlorophyll earlier, so I didn't know what I was saying. <laughs> Uh, Essen or Marin, what are you doing? Um, after changing, Essen returns to kind of like the common crew area, seeing the pilots got under control, but was looking for Goma, and um, basically, I'm guessing, like, would check on the ship where Goma is, seeing that she's in her quarters, which is odd since she was already changed. Mm -hmm. He goes to talk to Goma. Okay. <laughs> and you just hear a. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you hear that as you arrive at the door. And definitely knocks, indicates his presence. <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> it's 
still very playfully Mission Commander Goma, it's Essen. Enter. <laughs> How is our cargo escort the mission the cargo. going? Cargo. They're not here, they can't hear me. How's our luggage <laughs> doing? She twitches a little at cargo. Yeah. Um, we all twitch to cargo. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'm, I'm afraid of it's just gonna show up. Um, I mean, at this point, we have worked together before, and like the major's not here, and the and cargo is not here. <laughs> um, so I think Goma does relax a little and says, terrifying. I mean, fine, but terrifying. They like super outrank us. I, I don't even. Like, is there even? They're, 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 you know, but no, 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 no. I'm sure you were fine. Did you talk to them? I, I just checked on their comfort. It felt like a thing that I should do since I'm commanding the mission. And they um, they asked me why I thought we could protect them. I... Did Did you answer because we were assigned to? <laughs> I just felt Goma's soul leave their body. <laughs> They're not even real, and I felt wrong. I felt that ascension. She takes a moment where many of those expressions pass her face in silence, and then she looks back at you and says, I took a few more words, but yes. <laughs> then I'm sure it was fine. Um, if you were me, would you think that we should, I mean, they do absolutely outrank us I think, but but are we supposed to, to know that? Would you, should I have, I didn't wait for them to dismiss me. <laughs> and they pops her head out of her room at that, I'm like, you didn't know what? <laughs> you can't hear this. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a video game where you can approve or disapprove from miles away. Yes. <laughs> I'm... Can they disapprove, can they approve? <laughs> Everybody dislikes that. I think you are per usual, working yourself up a little too much about this mission. I would ask that you relax. You're right, of course, of course. Again, I get it, conceptually, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, she's not. We are, we were chosen for this mission because whatever Major Rafia sees in us, she believes that our skills are suitable to the task. <laughs> Whether or not she was honest about what our task is, is yet to be determined. Are we bait? Sorry, we, let's we, not think that way. Let's not think that way. Let's not think that way. <laughs> we are carrying two VIPs who are more than capable of taking care of themselves. And there is a potential assassination attempt in the offing. We're not bait. We would be a Clever. distraction. Way. Let's not think that way. Let's not think that way. Collateral <laughs> damage, perhaps. <laughs> Cannon fodder. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, voice from above. That really makes yeah. me feel worse. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks. Um, thanks, Essen. I, um, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. And somewhere else on the ship, Mirren goes, we've just been jinxed. <laughs> Feel it. Speaking of, Mirren, what are you doing? Uh, so after getting changed and looking slightly more presentable, uh, Mirren went back out into, uh, I'm making assumptions on how the ship is structured. Sure. Uh, to the kind of common area that the various cabins are off of, which would have the nice little like fireproof playpen for <laughs> 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 and uh, post up basically like leaning against our, our warm Volca friend uh, but staring very intently at the doors to our VIPs cabin. Are you trying to weld them open or? No just uh, did listen a little bit when Goma was running through <laughs> reading out the mission brief to me. It's like, oh, we're supposed to be protecting these people. So <laughs> they're in their cabin, not much else to do right now, so we should just have eyes on it. And, it, and also can be cuddling up to the very, very warm Volga that has volcanic. Are you cold? 
We're in space. It's cold in space. <laughs> You're inside a ship. Uh, the temperate climate of a spaceship compared to being in the depths of a toa, which is my mm. normal habitat. Touche. I like it. So while you all are having these various existential crises, <laughs> <laughs> your VIP cargo <laughs> is, they're just kind of amused at this because you know, like how we talk about black ops, Navy SEALs, things like that. Imagine that, but like a, the next level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they they know things that are so secret, no one will know them till their grave. And they just are just like, oh, this is so sweet. This is probably a way for them to get ranked up or or learn something new. Or being punished. <laughs> In my case. Because they're just like sitting back, kicking back with wine, enjoying the ride, kind of like, okay, this is cute. We lived through assassination attempts like in the field daily years ago. This is nothing. So they they kind of wonder why Rafia sent you all, but they figured there's a reason. And, there's, and they also were like, why didn't they just send Invicta? <laughs> She's on vacation. <laughs> She finally got her day off. <laughs> yeah, and she's just like, you know what? You go do your spy thing. I'm going to leave y'all out. I'm going to stay out of that. I want an actual vacation day. <laughs> so th they're having a good chuckle at this because they're like, we don't really need babysitters. And you all are like, why are we here? <laughs> and that's how this voyage kind of goes for a while. Um, and you do eventually hear the prepare for landing. Prepare for landing. Everyone to the forward cabin for landing. Oh, yeah, I mean, Gova's there immediately. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yep. And you, you see them come out and take uh, the chairs kind of behind all of you. And they strap in. They're just like, they've done this a million times. They're not nervous flyers at all. Um, your Volca's strapped in and safe. <laughs> I was going to ask if there was, like, a special strap. For they, they basically have the equivalent of a yeah. baby car seat for a Volca. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Look, I don't have a pet or a child. I don't know how these things work in real life, let alone on the ship. Um, it's like one of those seat belts for dogs where you just look, <laughs> latch it onto their collar. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Now arriving at Hawthorne. Welcome to Hawthorne. Please disembark safely. And you, you feel the gravitational pull, you land, and as the ship depressurizes and you go out through the airlock, you, question, mm. would any of you have seen Hotharans before? Hmm. You work I mean, for Torch. You work for Torch, but Hotharans, other than Bartrand, and you may or may not have interacted with him as he's an ambassador, and you all are more field agents. I think we'd be aware, yeah, we would be aware. Aware, mm -hmm. but maybe but we not have have interacted. Yeah. I would say maybe seen Bertram like from afar. So nothing prepares you for basically walking out to uh, about eight feet of, yeah. of, you know, for us contemporary humans, what looks like an upright on two legs elephant. No tusks. We definitely make Goma go out first. Yeah. I was just looking at everyone's character sheets, and she's so bad at awareness that, that I was going to send you two out first, because you're going to see threats before she does. But she's so, uh, she's so frazzled that we got here without incident, which she didn't expect, that she's just like, yeah, uh, yeah no, that, that, of course, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and she'll, she'll disembark first. And Goma, when you exit the ship, you see a cheerful Hatharayan that spreads his arms and greets you. You must be Goma. And, and she recognizes him immediately because of course she's read his file at least 47 times on the trip here. Uh, Ambassador Bertrand, oh my goodness, it is so good to, <clears throat> sorry sir, it is excellent to meet you in person. We've arrived uh, with the dignitaries. Oh, those are just Invictus parents, it's fine. Her face just like freezes. <laughs> Bartrand has zero sense of decorum, anything else. He's the most laid back dignitary you'll ever meet. He's just like, yeah, yeah, ambassador. They gave me the title because I helped pilot some things. I don't really care about all that. 
So he is your nightmare Goma. Uh -huh. <laughs> and you do have to look up. Yeah, uh -huh. um, uh, yes, sir. Uh, the parents of, of Torch Agent Invicta, um, they've, uh, they've arrived safely, sir, and I believe we are to take them uh, directly to their lodgings uh, in preparation for the ceremony, which is when? Uh, the next morning. The next, uh, tomorrow morning. And, and they just, he just, he just chuckles. Oh, just stand down, stand down, it's fine. Where are the others? Uh, she turns around and is horrified to see that the other three have not yet disembarked. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> we, are, we, we are actually... Yeah, we're in Essen, formation. Okay, great. Yeah, Essen has, um, Essen has asked the um, Invictus parents to, you know, come with us and did read a little bit on at least what, what a proper torch escort should look like. So since Goma went first, he has now kind of taken the center position ahead of them and asked Kende and Mirren to be behind, and we are doing our best to it, like match their posture and tone mm. mm -hmm. as we slowly, and Essen is like, you know, walking down, seeing seeing Goma, and then just also, also looking up like, oh, okay, <laughs> yep. Yes, Hothrians are taller even than you. Yes, and, um, and says again, um, <clears throat> Um, Commander Goma, the, I don't really, uh, like dignitaries. the dignitaries, like, yeah, I guess dignitaries is what we landed on. Um, yeah, <laughs> um, the dignitaries are disembarked and prepared for their lodging. And you see them come up and greet Bartrand, very familiar, very yeah. like old home. Um, Look, they know Bartram. Bartram had saved We're all their over kid. here, like holding our breath and possibly. Like, we're supposed hey, to. Hey, we are the honor guard. Goma doesn't flinch. Just at any full of that. clenched. <laughs> 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 and you, you hear a language. So, question. Um, I want actually everyone to be to give me a roll to see if you recognize the language that Bartrand and Invictus' parents are speaking. Ah. Ooh, um, so basically, your awareness, whatever you would have, they'll give you some kind of. In no, I would go for probably because we're gonna do some dice rolling. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Go for wisdom. And it's a it's a easy difficulty rating. You mean you are trained torch agents. Um, and once you have your dice pool, um, give a quick explanation before you roll. So because it's easy, you'll need one success to make it. Okay. Um, I am using uh, my value of truth. Uh, cause Goma's gotta get it right. Uh, I'm gonna use the lore skill, which she's not great at, but that's to remember things about history and culture. Uh, and then since I'm not using any gear, it's a D4 basic utility die. That is not three fours, but in fact three twos, so she has no idea what language there is. No, you, you made it, it's, a simple, it's an easy DR. But that's zero successes. Oh, you're right. <laughs> well, you heard something going mm -hmm. on. That's fine, it's none of my business. They're talking to each other, I'm the honor guard. Um. <laughs> I think Essen is using uh, wisdom, so knowledge multiplied by experience, also using lore, um, information about history, uh, so that's uh, 3d4s and no utility. Uh, so uh, a d another d4 so another d4, d4 so. Mm -hmm. there you go. Ooh, Ooh, what you successes. got? Okay, cool. You made it. You, you won't recognize what they're saying. Uh, what about Kahinda and Marin? Uh, I am going to use... Um, power because in her mind like knowing different languages like you can better communicate with people and understand like culture mm -hmm. through language um i'm going to use oh, where is it um investigation okay. to sort of parse out like just the syllables and like the diction of the language and then i don't have any utilities so i'll just use the d4 all the d4 okay i got two successes yeah congratulations nice. And My then, first roll ever. Right? Okay. Yay! Uh, Mirren is going to use uh, exploration because it centers around curiosity and learning of new things. Um, so potentially could know something about more languages. And then actually using arts, uh, which in this case is described as understanding of material culture and different modes nice. of creative expression. Okay. Uh, so I also do not have a utility, so I'll be rolling two d4s and one d6 and hoping you for the best. You can do it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, two successes. You did it. And so I got a six. Is that like a 
super success? Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But, you are a super success, though. Don't worry about it. That's you right. Um, but you, you, for those of you that made the successes, you, you realize that they're speaking an interesting dialect of the high and old people. Oh. This is not something you would have heard in daily life around Torch or even you know, in talking with Invicta or any other high and old officers that were around. It's almost like a formalized special version. And, you know, for those of you who got the two successes, you realize that they're kind of having exchange about, you know, what do you know about these attempts? Like they're, they're trying to suss out what Bartrand may know mm. because there are other people around. Not all of them are torch agents. Not all of them are uh, folks that you might want overhearing what you're talking about. So it's, think of it almost like a thieves can't. Mm. So would we just recognize the language or would we fully understand the conversation? You, since you got two successes, you would understand most of the conversation of basically mm. kind of what's the situation, what do you know, we've been told about assassination attempts. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, because hopefully somebody would be reporting to Bartrand as an ambassador and in, inform him of this. So you, you're getting a bit more info than what the dossier have has from this source. Wait a second. Are you the only one? That I am the only one. Listen, I'm not on. No, you no, got everything. Two That's what my team. No, no I got the two fails. Fails. Oh, because oh, yeah, I'm like no, I'm the only one that failed. Yeah, no success. Because he's know, also the only one that read the entire dossier. That is correct. <laughs> um, yeah, like looking, you know, already Essen's already concerned about Goma just because this is a this is a lot and outside her comfort, um, does look over to see if, you know, because Kahinde and Mirin and Essen are, we're kind of clocking what they're saying and kind of looking over to kind of get the eye to Goma, like. Glazed eyes, just not actively <laughs> not listening. Just frozen. Um, walks and stands, stands next to her and, and, and just says they're, they're discussing the situation on Hotharink and if there is any information that may help our mission. She does not miss a beat because she's not comfortable in command, but also knows that just because she is in command doesn't mean she has to know everything or do everything. So she says, um, um, okay, uh, non-dossier information. Wasn't ready for that. All right, uh, keep me posted. <laughs> so, you know, they, they finally notice that you all are kind of waiting on them to do something because uh, basically everything has stopped now that they've had this yeah. interaction mm -hmm. and, um, Bartrand, oh, sorry, sorry, we, we were just catching up. No worries, no worries. Let's get you to your lodging and we, tonight we feast. Uh, your Volca is... is <laughs> well, Hotharans are, are hardy folks. We're not fireproof. Where is this Volca going to stay? That's a good question. Uh, Mirin, uh, uh, Goma gets Mirin's attention and, and sort of gestures back towards the, the ship uh, and she uh, taps something out on her pad and a little wheeled uh, fireproof crate comes rolling <laughs> down uh, and just that happens. Okay. Uh, well, well, uh, Gracia is very conscious of their surroundings. <laughs> Kehinde, yeah, Kehinde smiles wide. <laughs> All three of us just like, turn. Okay. What? Huh? What? Uh, and I'll clean up the rocks when they cough. We will charge you for any fire damage. You can charge Torch Goddess. No, you. You brought the Volca. Volca are not standard torch issue. You hear in a, in a, in a voice that is a Monsagene attendant. Ow, oh, betrayed by my own organization. <laughs> Fair. Okay, uh, we'll keep an eye then on, uh, we'll tr attempt to very well explain like, oh, okay, we will be cautious with making sure nothing catches on fire and at any time that I am not attending my Volca, we will make use of our nice, Fireproof uh, equipment provided by Goma. Excellent. We, oui. <laughs> if you will follow me, and they they lead you 
are you still in your formation to keep them safe? It, the, um, since the dignitaries sort of broke the formation, um, Essen and it kind of kind of gets over, is happy to follow at a respectful distance. Mm -hmm. So again, he's not really, like Gomo, he's not really sure what we're here for. Mm -hmm. So he is at the very least making the attempt of being head on swivel, yeah. but it, it feels like it's more for appearance because they're the, like, they're the hot stuff, not us. <laughs> Gomez actually started to think that maybe that is the point, that it's just that they deserve <laughs> to have people there and to be official, and maybe that's all we need to do. And so, yeah, uh, along with this and just keeping an eye out, not expecting to see anything, but ready. And and Vika's mother turns around and looks at all of you. So did Rafia explain what exactly is going on? Just that you're receiving a great honor here, ma'am, and uh, that... Uh, there are uh, clear and present dangers uh, to your lives that we are to uh, be aware of. Ah, uh, that old thing. So, and she's explaining this as you walk, because at this sure, point sure. now you're kind of in like, they're, the people around you are the only people who should be around you. Mm -hmm. There's not just random attendants and people passing by. Sure. So in the work we used to do, when Invicta was still just a cup, there were many people. <laughs> I like how you're like, like please oh. tell me more. <laughs> we there, were, the there were many people who wanted us dead because of the work we did for Vitoa. We are part of a group that is tasked with keeping the planet safe from the enemies that many of Invicta's friends discovered came from, and, and she pauses and tries to remember, I believe you called it Earth? Mm. Mm. So those people that showed up and tried to take over our planet at one point, we combated them, we kept them away, and they occasionally try to show up. And so that was something that we were tasked with keeping the planet safe from. And there were many times when things got a little too close for comfort. Mm. And as such, even in our <laughs> retirement, they still try to come after us because they think we've gotten old and complacent. Well, they haven't met us or our child. And while we do scoff at them and think it's funny that they can still try to attack us, they are a serious threat because if they can take out us or other people like us, those of us that keep you safe when, well, let's just say that the fairy tales that many of our parents told us are not simply fairy tales. There are dangerous things out there that we kept you from. And um, they still are out there and want us gone. Because as long as we draw our breath, we will keep fighting. So while we might scoff and laugh at the threat, it is very real. And I'll have a word with Rafia about not giving you the full story. So... When we have our welcome dinner, we will speak more candidly. And, you know, you all can close ranks or you can ask questions. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, the absolute horror. <laughs> Already, like, this is just real close to classified stuff that we shouldn't know, and then, and then Mirren's going to ask a question. Can you tell us more about Invicta when she was a cub? <laughs> I like the fact that this woman has just told you there's a great danger out in the universe. Yeah, yeah Earth. We People missed from Earth an are coming. opportunity it's like, nah, on give us that ship. Give us that tea. <laughs> we did not think through the reality that they were not just dignitaries, that they were Invicta's parents. <laughs> oh, you're adorable. What would you like to know? Was she always so like sharp and pointy? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> she just tilts her head like 
We have claws and fangs, yes? <laughs> yes. That's not did, what did you mean? Meant. Did you mean the weapons? Like yeah, because she like flexes her claws. Yeah. Like, you mean like this? No, 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 no. We, uh, we had a very interesting adventure a year ago on Foundation Day. Oh, I know. <laughs> it made the news, we know. <laughs> Why don't we circle back to this later? <laughs> oh, no. It sounds more like a dinner conversation, maybe an after, an after dinner. Oh, we know who you are. <laughs> I, All of you. We've read, we've read your dossiers. And Victor got me into this, so... It is very kind to be acknowledged, ma'am. <laughs> I was like, hope it was a great read. Um. Oh, and then she looks at you, Candy. So oh. wide. Oh, I've read your file. Uh, the updated version? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well. I hear that on occasion, Torch needs gardeners. <laughs> How does that pay, though? It's not a capitalist society. We <laughs> 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 so are post scarcity. Post scarcity. <laughs> so, this is how you know your players read nothing they were taught. <laughs> Or, or, I, or this is how you know that your players read it like three weeks ago and so much has happened between then and now. It's still not a capitalist society. I okay, yes. I take it, I take I it love back. It. No, I love it. I think it's well, also, very her. Uh, you know, showed me a pay scale earlier. <laughs> this is true, you did. Yeah. I did, you did I pull did. that it's up. Just, it's, it's only that, that it matters so much to you. <laughs> it, and it's less about it mattering. It's just like, well, that just sounds like a... Like a nice job. Oh, you sometimes well, want to know what was, what's a step up and what's a step down. Yeah. Right. Oh. right, right, yeah. right. I understood that where I'm like, well, a lot of fire beds catch, or a lot of flower beds catch on fire around Thank Torch Head. Thank you, man. I wonder why Big that. Job. And I am, a, I am a plant person. It's like, oh, that okay. sounds kind of nice. <laughs> mm, until a Volca chomps on you. The Volca doesn't eat the flowers. The Volca just happens to cough up rocks. Like I said, until the Volca fire. chomps on you. Yeah, talking is <laughs> off for my blood. <laughs> Fair. My chlorophyll. Mm, I'm not a bumblebee, though. <laughs> All right. All right. So, so yeah, I, like, I think, you know, like, th the awkwardness is kind of there. It is, beca it's, it's becoming apparent to Essen that they are, they are really, like, toying with their food. Like, they just see us as yeah. green as heck, and yeah. they're just like, we're, it's just fun for them to mess with us. Um, no, not necessarily, but they, but they're, they're curious about you after the Founders Day of last year. Mm. I mean, yeah, we did sort of fall into trouble that way. Yeah, and, you did. And also, that was an incident with um, when you, you discuss the enemy that they're discussing is the landed, correct? Mm -hmm. So, knowing that in you know, knowing that in that year, the threat has the threat level of that and the way their deviousness and their schemes haven't changed. Mm -hmm. It's you know, Essen is now that they're sort of alone is like. So if the landed are still constituting a significant threat to your lives. What is it? Do you, what is it? Do you and Ambassador Bertrand think that that the Hath, the environment of Hathaway is something? What essentially, while you are experienced in looking for threats, mm -hmm. it would be a lovely opportunity for us to learn to know how they may utilize the environment to threaten your lives. Hmm. Let's see. The planet of Hathaway is designed for Hathorians and not for people from Vatoa. So there's atmospheric pressure they could utilize. They could poison our food with things that is that are not native to Vatoa, but would not harm a Hotharian. <laughs> None of us were even thinking about Great. poison. Nope. Yeah, no, we were not <laughs> thinking about poison. Nope. Somebody nope. said food and we were off, so okay. Um, all right. Mm, there's poison. They could put you out of an airlock. They could put you underground, but that wouldn't do much for Marin because you came from underground. Your Volca would probably fix that. And she just starts rattling off all the various ways that you all could get killed on Hathare. Um One, Essen actually has something, but then says, and I'm sure that our, our mission commander would also want to know, have there been any, um, for the diplomatic staff and the premises, have there, uh, has everyone been confirmed and verified? Have there been any changes to personnel or staff recently that might 
that might present a problem. And she just looks at, at Ambassador. Oh, so yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. that was that was really more meant to um, to the ambassador. Yeah. Um, and he he actually pulls up a data pad and starts going through it. Nope, no changes. Everyone has been locked in for this event for the past six months. Good. The Good. venue has security sweeps every six hours. Um, you will be given a special badge for entry and exit into the venue. And and then you just see him frown. That's unusual. Oh, uh -uh. Ambassador, what's wrong? If I may ask. Mm. Well, you already did, but... Burn what? trend. Listen. Burn trend. Listen. He's nicer than that. When you're playing him. Fair enough. Um, and he's just like, there's been an unauthorized entry. Oh, interesting. And it's like, we should convene to, to the war room. Uh, this is escalated uh, quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that. We only have two hours to play. All right. Um, uh, don't, yeah. Please, please. I, and I think like close ranks. Uh, that's yep. that's a threat, right? Not from from Bertrand, but that constitutes a threat. So like we tighten in on them and start yeah. moving to wherever it is. And he leads you to, yeah, of course. you know, think big sci-fi movie war room yeah, 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 type yeah. place. <laughs> Except everything is comically large for all of you. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> this is my favorite thing. <laughs> I love it. Like Wait, I as a player love it. Love the visual. Would Mirren be able to like get onto a chair if she climbed onto the Volca? Probably. So please give wow. me a, a roll to see if you can climb on your Volca and not startle it and make it spit fire. <laughs> <laughs> that went a lot of places all of a sudden. <laughs> Look, I'm going to make you all do roles for things because right. the Volca is just chilling and suddenly someone's climbing on it. Fair. While you do that, let me ask, um, did Bertrand clarify where the unauthorized entry was? Mm -hmm. Was it to like the venue or? It was to actually offices near the premises because that would mean someone's trying to break into files or get other information, probably on the event and the schedule. Sure, mm -hmm. uh, same like complex as this room that we're in now? Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, is there like security footage? There could be. Give me a roll. Okay. You said it was un and you said it was unauthorized. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, well, again, while they are doing that, mm -hmm. Ambassador, how would it be easy for someone to gain access? It sounds like you have. It sounds like you had badging to get in. It seemed like your security was tight. So. Essentially, we are looking at somebody um, with extensive resources if they are that easily able to bypass your security. Oh, it shouldn't be easy, which means it's either a Monsagene or someone who has somehow forged the documents and credentials to be part of our staff. Okay, so my dice pull for this. Uh, <laughs> My value is freedom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. Described as flight against captivity and equality, so I want to. There you go. I, I want to sure. like be on the same level as uh, the Hathorans, uh, and then science, which is described as leveraging your understanding of the physical and natural world. So, sure. uh, can I do this without startling my Volca? <laughs> Important. Uh, which I have a D8 for the first, and then a D8 and D4 for the second. Nice. Question. Okay. Rather than a D4 standard utility. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid. Can I bump it up to a D6? Because I'm using my Volca. Oh. oh. That was so much better than I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And now I want to know what you were. So trying. you're using the you're Volca. Trained, yeah. Like, is my Volca considered part of my everything? Sure. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Nice. These are the most amazing dice bolts. <laughs> hey. All right, I have three successes. Okay. Oh, you absolutely climb up the Volca. It even like leans down a little bit to help you. Yeah. And oh, you don't get a fire you don't get a fiery rock in the face. Congratulations. Great. <laughs> no. right. All right, you, winning. You climb up into the comically large chair and you're chilling there. Yeah. 
Um, I just want to be able to see over the table for the conversation we're about to have. Yeah, basically, you're standing in the chair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, I did roll for the security footage. Um, for my dice pool, I use uh, duty, serving something bigger, because this is a big mission in keeping people safe. Um, my skill is investigation, because natch. Um, and then I don't have a utility for this. So, so a D4. D4. Um, so that's two D4s and a D8, and I did get two successes. Okay. You actually um, see over on another console at your request, a uh, screen flickers to life, mm. and a Hothran will have to help you do it. Yeah. But, well, it's more the security than, than reaching it. Yeah. It is, it is key to Hothran biometrics. Sure, and their height. Yeah. And their height. So, <laughs> um, mean by biometrics. Yeah. <laughs> so a Hothran agent comes over and, and helps you unlock the footage while you're doing that. Um, and Bertrand just starts, for, for a elephantine type person, he is tapping away very quickly, mm -hmm. trying to figure out, okay, where did this breach come from? How many other people have joined us in this room aside from the six of us? So it's you four, Bartrand, Seven of us, sorry. um, the Monsagene attendant that, um, came with you, so, okay. and, and if we count the Volca, there's eight people total in this okay. room. Okay. Look, it's math and it's late. Don't. No, don't no. I, I, I was really mostly like, how likely is it that whoever has infiltrated is among our group right yeah. now? Trying to make sure. Like, is there anyone outside of the four of us, the two high and all, Bertrand and the Volca? Yeah. And, and the attendant. And, and the, the attendant. attendant. Uh, during all of this. Uh, Goma is watching the attendant, um, mm -hmm. and she uh, she sort of some of her whorls begin to glow ever so slightly as she focuses in on them, and all of her sort of nervousness drains away. She becomes very uh, calm and very still uh, as she tries to just watch for any sort of nervousness or anything that might indicate that this is the person. Because okay. if it is, we're in much bigger and much more mm. present trouble. Oh, absolutely. So, are you, are you very blatantly observing this person? Uh, no, this is one of the things that Goma's really good at. One of like two things that she's really good at. <laughs> um, and she becomes very like calm and competent when she's doing one of those two things. Um, and in fact, she is using some of her, uh, some of her bio priest abilities um, to overlay a vision of this person as like a set of data, like uh, the Toan equivalent of like adrenaline levels and perspiration and all of those things. Like Terminator. Um, yeah. <laughs> so if there's, if there's, a, I mean, there's more if there's a dice roll involved, but uh, so yeah, she's not particularly overt about it, no. Okay. I'm going to roll some dice. Okay. Ooh. I'm let afraid. I <laughs> wow, I heard oh no from you. <laughs> <laughs> you all let me know if I should too. <laughs> You're not storyteller. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and what would I... All right. I'm doing a thing. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm rolling for the Monsagene attendant. Okay. Um, I'm using oh, duty, which is serving something bigger. Oh. Wait, is the attendant with us is a Monsagene? Yes. Okay. Oh, even better. Yeah. Great. Yes. So duty with a D8. And... Maybe don't tell us what skill in case it's like deception. <laughs> wow. Or manipulation in this game. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just for that, I should. No. Oh. <laughs> don't pay me any attention. All Why right. do you keep jinxing us? I know. Fine. Good job. Good fine. job. You know. What could possibly go wrong? Oh. Why are you oh. jinxing oh. us? <laughs> you know what? I would like it to show on the record that it was not me. <laughs> it was not me. All right, I'm just rolling some dice. Right. Ooh, okay. Ooh. Do, I, do I need to do anything? <laughs> not yet. Okay. Uh, Run. <laughs> what do I notice then if I'm not going to roll for it? Um, you notice that for months again, they seem a little nervous. Oh. And then you all hear the pressure lock click of the room you're in. 
Oh, okay, like the lock, door is locking locked. us in. Yes. Okay. I was like, or depressurize. Like what? <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking pressure lock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We get shot into space of suddenly. No, you're not um, getting shot into okay. space. Okay. So, death. <laughs> so, the, so now the essentially the room has been sealed. Yes. So it's it's in. like a DEFCON situation. Okay. Um. Okay. Yeah. Essen immediately looks to um the Hathare and especially Ambassador to see like, essentially, he doesn't understand what triggered this and is mm -hmm. kind of waiting to see what they do. Yeah, um, this standard procedure. Um, Barchand, you can see his ears like wiggle a little bit and he looks a little panicked. He's trying not to give it away that he is very concerned that that door just suddenly locked. Okay. Uh, have we seen anything on the security footage? Mm -hmm. Hmm, funny that. The security footage isn't there. Yeah. It's just static. Uh, all right. Well, bad things have happened. Yep. <laughs> and Goma noticed that that Monsagene was already nervous. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, oh, no. <laughs> 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 uh, wow. She was good at if you had made me roll to find the thing out, but now that it's true, I don't really, she's not really good at much else. <laughs> <laughs> okay, That's so. That's why we're a team. That yeah, is why we are so a team. In, yeah. in the, the context of the room, we have um, uh, Kahinde over by the Security Council console mm -hmm. looking at footage, or not footage in this case. Yeah. Uh, Goma is paying close attention to the Monsgede mm -hmm. uh, attendant. Uh, Mirren is on a very large chair standing. Yes. Uh, <laughs> With your Volca like down there wondering what's going on. Yeah, just like hanging out on the floor like the Volca does. Uh, and then where are our two dignitaries in mm -hmm. relation to both uh, Bertrand and the attendant? So Invicta's parents are now kind of side by side and they, they gave the, each other that look of like, oh, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. um, and Bertrand is standing not near the, the door, but he is kind of trying to look casual <laughs> about reaching toward a console. Okay. Um, he may or may not be doing a good job of it. I need to <laughs> roll for him. Um, but he, he is, he is having a concern. And uh, it's very clear from the body language of Invicta's parents are like, here we go again. Are there any other means of ingress into the, uh, Essen is asking now loudly since whatever has happened is happening. Are there mm -hmm. any other means of ingress into this chamber? And the Monsagini looks at you and looks up. Oh crap, are there vents here? What do, uh -huh. we, what do we see when we look up? Uh, you see large vents, large enough for a probably young Hothere to climb into, but they're very high up because Hothereans are very tall. You maybe could get up there if you climbed on Bartrand's shoulders, but you'd have to get there first. I'm less yeah. interested in going out that way than in someone coming in, in that, that way, yeah, right? I was wondering <laughs> that was, yeah, um, okay. Do we have any like like stealth communication devices? Do those exist within Torch? You would have the standard kind of security. Because okay. I was just wondering if there was a way for Goma to relate to us um, what they have noticed about the attendant. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, once the door locked, I think that would have been the first thing. Since that's the end of her being able to do much, <laughs> okay. uh, she would. Yeah, that's a good point. She would. Uh, she would just keep you all sort of a running, very quiet running commentary on the one sort of unknown quantity in the room. Okay. This Monskene, yeah. Okay. And I think Mirin would have probably used her staff to kind of uh, tap on Brescia, who's hanging out on the floor, mm. uh, to move closer to uh, Invicta's parents. Okay. Oh, good. okay. Yeah. You know, and they're just kind of subtly like undoing the the snaps of their dress uniform, kind of like they're strapped up. <laughs> I'm very glad to hear it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> they probably are the most experienced um, combatants here. All right. Uh, it's also interesting that the Masagene immediately looked up when you asked the question. What yeah, I. So are you going to say something? Oh, no, it's just like you asked a question and they, they answered just non-verbally. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Has this attendant spoken to us at all? Um, no. That's weird. Uh huh. Uh. And based on based on Goma's kind of live feed, there's you know, you know, we're kind of all doing like the molar mic comms back mm -hmm. to each other. Like, there's no chance that this Monsagene isn't a Monsagene, is there? Mm. Oh, are you trying to see if they're not truly a Monsagene? Like I'm asking if the if essentially if the if the data that she has been collecting actually bears out or is anomalous in that way. Yeah. Mm, interesting. I, you know what? One of you roll a pool, and I'm gonna have to beat it. May Ooh. I? <laughs> <laughs> She's good at two things. <laughs> Go please, <laughs> please. Um, great. Uh, exploration value, learning new things, like whether this Monsagene is a Monsagene. Um, I'm gonna use uh, empathy, detecting emotion and lies, uh, which is another eight and a six. I'm gonna use my it's a binary universe talent, uh, which allows me when making an empathy roll, I can sacrifice one mental stress, so I'm gonna take one mental stress, uh, and that is going to allow me to add my terminal skill to the dice pool, because I'm looking at these people as if they are a set of data. Uh, do, 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 making it easier to reveal strengths, weaknesses, severities of injuries, diseases present, or the target's exact emotional needs, uh, as well as any other biological information relevant to the situation. All right. And then a D4 utility. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, three successes, because I know what number I need to look for. <laughs> All right. Um, would you like to know what pool I'm going to use to contest that? Uh, that is entirely up to you and makes me nervous that you asked. <laughs> oh, Yohania, you've known me so long. All oh, right. Wait, uh, sorry, I missed one. Uh, four successes. Well, 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 well. All right. Um, da, 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 da. Sorry, I'm just, I'm deciding how to mm -hmm. choose your fate. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. That's not concerning Otherwise, at all. Otherwise, Essence, Essence now eyes are just locked on those vents. And is he is moving a little closer to um, the ambassador. Okay. Uh, and I would say Kehinde is moving towards the attendant. Like, casually. Yeah. <laughs> super cash. Yeah, super cash. It's fine. Ooh. Vibing. I only got two successes to yours. Ooh. To my, what did I end up with? Four. Four, Four. Four. successes. Uh, okay, that is a uh, major success with one of my values. So uh, since that's a major success, I'm going to heal that stress I took from using the ability. And what you notice, A, about the data that you're collecting, and two, about the movements of the Monsagene um, attendant, is that they are very, very nervous for a Monsagene. And from knowing other Monsagene and, sure. and in your work with Torch, you know that usually emotion like that is not standard for Monsagene to openly display, especially amongst new people, others sure. they don't know. Sure, and certainly not at that high a biological level. Yeah, cool, mm -hmm. uh, not cool. Bad, tell them. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, that's so fascinating. I wonder how nope. that doesn't matter. Nope. Tell them. Nope. <laughs> um, yeah, so as you are relaying this data, a couple things happen at the same time. I love it. <laughs> Bartrand just stops trying to be subtle because clearly Good. something's up. Yeah. Okay. And he reaches back and slams what probably we would think of as an emergency button, like something Great. is wrong here. Great. And the Monsagene starts to pull, reach for a holster. No. No. No, 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 no but y'all no. deal with okay. it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> y'all deal, wow. wow. deal with it. Y'all deal with it. I'll fix wow. you, you uh, I said I was approaching the Monsagene before, so yeah. like as this is happening, I think Kehinde notices that they're reaching for something and just like lays it on kind of thing like, oh my God, I'm a little scared right now. Do you know what's going on? Oh. And you're asking the monster again, is it? She's manipulating yes. him. Yes. Are you rolling I, to manipulate? manipulate? I'm rolling to manipulate. Yes. <laughs> I get a yes. D10 yes. of that <laughs> and a D4. <laughs> All right, try to manipulate and see okay. what they do. Um, so I'm, for my skill, I'm gonna try to use manipulation. Um, my values is going to be glory, winning at any cost. Oh, I get another D4 <laughs> back. Yeah. All right. um, and then uh, one D4 for utility. <laughs> 
two, three successes. Yes. All right. Um, seeing as how the Monsignor is caught out and surprised, basically. Mm-hmm. Like, what do you mean you're a torch agent? Oh, I'm that's new. Not a response. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not new. new. I'm new. <laughs> I'm new. Oh. This is literally my first mission. <laughs> I was not at the Founders Day thing last year. It's okay. It's her first Founders day. Day. It's her first day. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> and this Monsagene clearly is not a Monsagene. Mm-hmm. And they just kind of look at you like, this is the best Torch could send. Secure them. Secure them. Secure them now. Uh, uh, would Mirren have been able to jump onto the table from the chair? Yeah. Yeah. You know right. what? YOLO, it's a one shot. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, how close in proximity are all of these things? Like, if I'm on the table and I move to that side, is there an, like, can I hit them with my staff? I feel like <laughs> the room is so large. How are like, you getting like, across? Uh, We're just going to escalate this whole thing. <laughs> so, if this is. I got the, long limbs. Like it. So, if this is the table and you are basically standing in a, what the equivalent of like, a kids' table. Um, <laughs> this size. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is you on the table right now. Away. <laughs> to there. You have to use your full movement and yeah. dash. I have to really the long table. limbs. That's true. That's mm-hmm. true. So, so if you would like to do some kind of acrobatic thing to basically jump and whack this not Monsagene Monsagene with your staff, go for it. I mean. Goma said we needed to do something. So I did. I'm You're doing something. something. I am not mad about this. Goma is supporting your decision for the and while first you are time doing in the last this hour thing, and 40 minutes. Uh, both Invicta's parents. One pulls out a blade. The other pulls out a, a basically a laser rifle thing that's come. And they're like. Oh, that's a much better choice than the option. It's a lantern. Smack them in the face with a lantern. Yeah. <laughs> Hope they get a burn. I'm thinking more like, you know, like coming in with like a full swing. Yes. Oh, baseball oh, even better. swing. And yes, remember, please. there's a lantern on the end of this. So. Okay, this is not the Shadow Curse Lands. I love it. Yeah. I, love it. Uh, I right. live underground. Do that's it. my excuse for everything. Yes. <laughs> All right, so while you're doing that, I'm. So the Monsagene, the non Monsagene, Monsagene, <laughs> say that three times fast. God is basically surprised because they thought they were gonna like get their shot off and then probably go through the vent that they very unsubtly looked at because now they're like, wait, this wasn't supposed to go down this way. I was supposed to just shoot these people and run. <laughs> and then here, I'm like, oh my God, I'm scared I'm so new here. <laughs> <laughs> they wanna shoot I you first. I don't, you wanna shoot me first. <laughs> Listen, okay, as long as on. they don't shoot Invicta's parents first, they yeah. can shoot whoever they want. <laughs> no, we did not agree to that. Okay, I'm sorry. No, yeah. right now. We're all trying wow. to get out of this okay. alive. I don't know what all page right. of the briefing that listen, was on. We didn't listen, agree to that. Commander, I understand. Oh, man. Yes, I've been holding on to that this whole time. You're all welcome. All right, so, okay. Marin, what are you doing? Okay, so uh, my dice pool, uh, my value is going to be self, which is uh, staying alive at all costs. <laughs> I have no trust in what's happening here. Sure. Listen. Uh, Major Rafia set us up with a lot of question marks about how likely we were to come back alive. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of yeah. should, 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 yeah. yeah. A lot of, and lot then, of survivability, uh, maybe. Uh, my skill is going to also be survival, uh, or is survival, which is leveraging your understanding of the environment. Oh, sure. mm-hmm. So, like, I judge the distance to the edge of this table. I know exactly oh, no. how many steps it's going to take. <laughs> I have know exactly what the, like, angle and jump speed I need to have to get a nice good hit with this staff. So, <laughs> All right, um, do it. And that is a, a D8, then a D10, and a D6, and my staff gives me a, a standard D4 utility. So we're gonna hope for the best here, y'all. I got one success. That is more than zero. <laughs> that is more than zero. <laughs> yeah, that is more yeah. than zero. So you manage to do your calculations and you do manage to get to the table and hit them. Tell us what that looks like. All right. Uh, since I got one success, is this like a decent success? Or yes. A, okay. you, you succeed. You, you're not like amazing crit, like look at me acrobatics, but you, you basically did what you want to do without falling on your face okay, or your perfect. Volca. Okay, so Mirren is like, all right, Goman told us to do something about this, so I guess I'm gonna do something. Uh, and is sprinting at the edge of the table, manages the correct jump, uh, 
and swings, but maybe not with as much force as she had hoped for, to catch this Monsagini that's not a Monsagini, uh, clear across the face with the lantern, like not the staff, but just the lantern like swinging at the end. Oh. oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Love that. You hurt them because nobody expects a lantern to the face. No. <laughs> Truly no. <laughs> and then it happens. Life comes at you fast. <laughs> <laughs> and so does that lantern. <laughs> so they, they've taken definitely a couple stress from that. Congratulations. Uh, do any of you want to do anything before Invicta's parents act? I would like to attack them with my hair. <laughs> my hair, yeah. Yes, yeah, the, 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 the Venus flag. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. right, so yes. tell us how you're doing that. Um, I'm going to use, um, where is it? Uh, Glory winning at all costs, because um, she's trying to win. She's <laughs> trying to get her rank back up at her job, honestly. <laughs> she doesn't want to be a gardener she now? Needs, she needs to do a good job here. You have student loans rude. to pay back. What'd you say? <laughs> You like telling student loans to pay me back. Yeah, I need to, I'm trying to pay off some student loans. I need Cereal. this job. Um, I'm going to use grace, performing physical speed, feats, and using my speed and agility because I'm trying to, I'm not trying to like be phys like physical with this person. I'm trying to like get in and sort of strike it like a, like a artery or something. You're trying to take them out. I'm trying to take them out, yeah. And then uh, a D, uh, D4 for my hair. Okay. I only got one success. So one of your your Venus flytrap mm -hmm. hairs does take a nice little chomp. Yeah. What does that little chomp oh. look like? It's the hair <laughs> is like prehensile and it sort of just rises up and strikes out like a viper and it like lat like latches onto like the neck basically and um, as it bites it like uh, it injects like some enzymes because that's how they break down their food okay. it with enzy like enzyme, enzymatic acid. It's a really bad day for this guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so he would take like a, like a D4 damage, some little dinky little damage, but not. I will roll it. Two. Yeah, they're, they're not doing good. Because remember, stress, the way that, that health is calculated, the numbers are not high. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Essen or Goma, would you like to act? Um, upon seeing Invictus' parents, go for their weapons. Uh, Essen extends his arm and um, sends a charge through a metallic combat sleeve that's on his, on his hand. And at that charge, um, it's sort of like programmable matter. It's, it breaks down and reforms as a gun in his hand. Oh, um, sick. That he aims and it's sort of like, it's, oh, I said, oh wow, I said mass driver, so this is actually kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of nasty. Um, how was how the, the, how is the, like, the, the non-Sagene um, reacting to all of this? <laughs> <laughs> New word. Right. New um, word. But how are they, yeah, how, basically, how are they looking now, like? They're, they're, they've got a little chomp mark on okay. <laughs> this Venus flytrap. Okay, and they, and they, they gave, they're, gave us a little sassy speech. They're kind of burning so. right now from a, mm -hmm. from a lantern to the face. That's I great, because like this, like an this, in yeah, this also like conducts <laughs> electricity, so this is going to be wonderful. So yeah. Oh, no. Um, so it's yeah, he's going he's gonna to take the shot. Oh, um, no, because we'll there's probably oil on them from your lamp. <laughs> can uh, oh, yeah, can duck fires. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh no. So since there's already been damage done, as uh, as Essen brings out uh, his weapon, uh, can Goma uh, take a minute to try to assess the person again, uh, and then based on what she sees, uh, flip a flip a little disc of something to Essen for his ammunition that will. Uh, some sort of chemical or something that will be introduced to the ammunition to make it even worse on this person to take them down. I don't fight myself, but I help you all really take them down. You know what? In, in the interest of shenaniganry and time, mm. we'll say yes unless you would like to roll a quick pool. All right, I will. So we can see how much more damage this will do. <laughs> it's horse. Um, um, so this will, uh, I'm helping you so it'll increase your utility die depending on how well I do. Um, let's do that, and then, and I'm gonna use the binary universe again because uh, that's more dice. Yeah. 
Um, I'm going with uh, glory and uh, targeting. Not usually, he's not really uh, like a shooter person, but that's okay. And then the um, then the weapon is a D8 for the utility, and now I'm bumping the other utility up to a six. Oh so. uh, your utility is bumped up to a 12. Oh my god. I'm just going to put that I got down. Five, six, would you like and a D12? I would love a D12, thank you. Okay. Well then. Um, that is one, two, two successes. All right. Yeah, but you know, you know what? The, Goma really helped you out there. <laughs> <laughs> and and this poor soul, this poor, poor soul that took this assignment that is now wishing they had failed assassin school. <laughs> <laughs> I think they kind of did. They, yeah, I mean, this is, this is kind of how you fail assassin school. <laughs> well, they were doing good to be sent after such high value targets as Invictus Para. Maybe they were bait too. Yeah. There you go. You know, they there had to go. be good to get to this point. Let them have this moment before they die. <laughs> No. We no. refuse. No, no. Goma reads that in their emotions as they're fading out and says, you did so good, honey. You tried. And, and again, they says, no, they absolutely didn't. They straight up looked up at where they're going to try to escape before we would be asked about it. did give the game away really They gave it away so fast. Look, I didn't say I was a good spy, okay? <laughs> as they're dying. Yeah. <laughs> and then... Stop uh, roasting me. <laughs> and uh, Invicta's father comes over and simply just double taps this poor sucker. Oh, <laughs> oh. Nice. I'm not gonna make them, I'm not making him roll for that. Not after just all we've done. In the interest of time. Um, yeah, so uh, there's now a smoking hole where that person's head was. Great. Mm. But the rest of them can be examined for biological matter and orders and oh, how they fake being a monsagene. Eh? Oh, 100% 100, 100 oh. looting the body. <laughs> this is not D&D. <laughs> Jesus. We are searching the body for additional information pertaining to yes. this. Yes. Immediately checking databases and, and pads that they have to see if there are others. Oh, the, in that aspect of being an assassin, they're good. There's nothing to uh, Okay. There's nothing mm -hmm. obvious to trace on them. And so as you all are trying to check over the body, you, you hear the doors open once more. Okay. And you know, a team comes in, they remove We attack the team. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Goma's very nervous, but if there's more of them. I'm sorry, no we don't, no we don't, okay, no, we I, don't no we don't. I want Goma to turn around and trip over Brescia. <laughs> <laughs> just, we'll just cut that off at the knees. So poor Brescia is like, what do I do? Yeah, like, Brescia didn't get to do anything here. Brescia just Good. like, Brescia will just like throw a fireball to add insult to injury on the body of the assassin. Oh, <laughs> uh, and then you, then you hear Invicta's parents. Well done. Essence still kind of in like that. That is cool to hear. Essence yeah, yeah, is still yeah. very much in the moment. Like Ambassador, can we uh, trace who that was supposed to be? How that like yeah. he has now gone into very much like, information. How did they? Mode. How were, like, did they manage to infiltrate? Yeah. And, oh and no, you almost he doesn't hear the congratulations. So he's like, oh, 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 okay. So you hear you hear a very businesslike version of of Bartrand uh -huh. barking out orders. Good. You take this body to the lab and make sure that no one touches it, that it is not contaminated. You, you make sure that there is a record of how they got through our security, how they pretended to be one of our staff. And you just hear these orders. This is not the Bartrand you have ever met or known. This, this is Ambassador Bartrand at, at command. Love it. And then it's, it's almost like weirdly like a movie where it's like all these things happen and then it's just quiet. Mm. And you know, you just see Invicta's mom sitting there polishing the sword, just watching all this mayhem. And you know, Invicta's dad is just like cleaning the residue off of his gun because, well, things splattered. Mm -hmm. um, Got to keep your gun clean. And they're just they're just like smiling at all of you. Now I see why Rafia sent you. Oh, Goma just burst into tears. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I mean, good tears, but yeah, no, that's, oh, and, and, it's and, been a lot in the last... And Victor's mom just going and pats you on the seconds. shoulder. Are, are you okay? Yeah, 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 sorry. I and she just, she just like, actually, like... die and we were going to be demoted. She just, <laughs> <laughs> she just gives you a hug. Uh, oh. Oh. oh, it's okay, it's okay. You, you so did a good job. Sorry, I'm professional. Page 74, section B, paragraph 3 of the handbook says we're not supposed to show, she just show, says, show emotion. It's okay. Goma, it's okay. Goma. Goma, it's okay. And she just, like, still a person, and you're allowed to feel your feelings. 
Not according to the handbook. <laughs> <laughs> Goma, consider this. Not everything in the handbook is right. What? <laughs> there, we, there it is. Now she's back. Now she's back. We're good. Yeah, We're good. That there snaps we go. her back. Um, <laughs> ma'am, uh, we... Uh, it has been a pleasure to do our duty, and if I may add, personally, it's a shame that we didn't get to see you in action. Yeah. I mean, he she, she, she pulled the sword out. No, I was saying to her. Oh, yeah. pulled the sword out and didn't to do anything. <laughs> and she just smiles at you and tips your ch her... Sword under your chin. Oop, up, up, up. No, not now. I mean, <laughs> for real. Okay, Brian, thank you so much, because that's what I was thinking. I was like, okay. Uh, that, is, that is a very, that is that a very is... distinct signal being sent right now, I guess. Yes. Okay. And she just smiles at you. I mean, if you really want to see me in action, we could spar. Do it. <laughs> this is not helping. <laughs> Nobody said what kind of sparring she was talking about, and I that's know, where we're going to end. Fine. Wow. <laughs> oh. God. All right. Uh, in the time we have left, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, everyone watching at home. And thank you, Brian, Mandy, Eugenio, and Fair, for uh, dealing with me and my nerves and my... <laughs> nervousness and anxiety in running this game <laughs> for the first time. Yeah. yeah. So. Woo! Um, your first time running, my first time playing, I think we both nailed it. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Um, and with the time that we have left, uh, everyone please say where people can find you, what you're doing tomorrow on the last day of the con, because we have three of four PTI fellows on stage and Woo! the fourth in the audience. So, um, we're going to start with Brian. Great. I was looking up what I was doing because I forgot. We um, can hi, I am Brian Gray. Uh, you can find me pretty much everywhere on social media as Urban Bohemian. You can see me around PAX, um, usually looking very tired from one place to another. <laughs> Tomorrow in the PAX Together Intersection Lounge, I will be doing classic board games. We'll be playing Sorry and Trouble. And then um, classic card games. We'll be playing Dixit and the Friendship Ender Uno. Yeah. Oops. Thank you so much for taking my idea and running with it about the Uno, because I brought that up several times. <laughs> Mandy, where can we find you? Yes, hi, I'm Mandy. Uh, you can find me around the internet as LadyLuck34, and I will be uh, tomorrow on the Freelancing 301 panel at 1.30 p.m. in an, a room I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Probably Leviathan or Crab God. Yes, uh, and yeah. Yeah, I know. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Okenio. Uh, you can find me on uh, Twitter and Twitch at DM Jazzy Hands. Uh, tomorrow at the con, I am running my last game uh, as a PTI fellow. I'm running some Dungeons and Dragons. I'm uh, going to be running a three hour session of Mario Ortegon's brilliant Fiend of Hollow Mine from Journeys to the Radiant Citadel. Uh, three sign up slots are available for electronic reservation uh, in the morning at 8 o'clock. Get them fast because they've been all of the PTI fellows' games have been going pretty quick. I am reserving two slots in case you are unable to, in case the internet craps out at your hotel or something. There are two slots that will be walk up. Those sign ups start at 10 a.m. in the room. So if you do want to try and get one of those slots, be sure that you're there a little early uh, so you can get into the line. And um, we're gonna be doing that. We've got pre-generated characters for you, so no worries about any of that. If you've never played, that's fine too. We'll walk you through it. Uh, and that's me. Uh, I'll wait for the applause. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, I'm Farron Bailey, uh, known as Fairbear on the internet. Um, tomorrow you can find me in the PTI lounge around, I think, 11.45 for a game of uh, uh, Magic and Misdeeds. Um, I'm pretty sure there's still, there will be signups available online and you can also walk in and register if you can't get onto the app. Um, and then after that, you can just find me floating around the con. I'll probably finally get it to the expo hall. I haven't done that yet. Um, and just, you know, recuperating from this very busy weekend. Uh, and I've been your storyteller, Tanya Cypher of Tear. Tomorrow I have two panels back to back. One is, it's time for the talk, working games while black. That is going to be over in Leviathan. It's not being streamed, so we're going to be as very honest as we can be. Um, and what? What time? At 12 p.m. And then uh, right after that, I'm going to skip Q&A for one panel to run to Planning for Success, Upgrading Session Zero. So if you're planning to run games, do games, or be a player in games, 
come to this talk about session zero because too many people don't know what they are. And that is next door, uh, one o'clock at Crab God. And that is time. We are out. Have a great PAX. Yeah. And uh, see you later. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you very much. Oh, you're very welcome.